Hi everyone and welcome back to David. Today we are tackling a really cool topic in the world of AI, RAC or Retrieval Augmented Generation. We will build backend of the website where AI responses are based on our documents. But let's start with a simple question. Why do we even need something called RAC? Normally, when we use an AI chatbot, the process looks like this. The user asks a question or a query, the AI chatbot processes it and then it gives a response, simply as that. But that brings up an important question. Where do these chatbots get their knowledge from? How do they actually create the answer that they give us? Well, chatbots learn from massive amounts of information from all over the internet. Think Reddit, Wikipedia, YouTube, Google, and tons of other websites. The way it works is that developer gathers a huge data set of text and data from these platforms. This data set is then fed into the powerful computers in a data center where the AI model is trained. The final product is large language model or LLM that powers the applications we use every day like ChatGPT, Gemini or Grok. But this approach have some big limitations. First, LLMs have a knowledge cutoff date. Think of it like a textbook that was printed on a specific day. The model only knows about information that existed before the day. It is completely unaware of any new information, events or developments that have happened since. Another limitation is that the public dataset doesn't include private information. It doesn't know anything about your company's internal documents, your team's project guidelines or your private code. It simply wasn't part of the training data. And finally, a really important limitation is that the training data can sometimes contain incorrect or false information. The AI doesn't know the difference and can sometimes repeat those mistakes. So how do we get around those problems? This is where Retrieval Augmented Generation comes in. To understand how RAC helps, let's walk through its workflow. The RAC workflow is divided into two main parts. The first part is all about preparing our own information. We start with our source document. These are the files we want the AI to learn from. The system takes those documents and breaks them down into smaller, manageable pieces called chunks. Then it creates something called embeddings for each chunk. An embedding is just a special way of representing the meaning of the text in a numerical format that computers can understand. Think of embeddings like translating text into AI's native language. When you write, how do I protect my password? The AI can directly compare that to the thousands of help articles. So it converts your question into a special format it understands. Kind of like turning everything into numbers that capture the meaning. And when we process our source documents, it does the same for all of them. Once everything is in this format, the AI can quickly say, oh, this article about password security has the same meaning fingerprint as your question and pulls that one up. So embeddings let the AI understand what the text is about. So it can match your question to the relevant information even if the exact words are different. Finally, all of the embeddings are stored and organized in a special kind of database called a vector database. You can think of this as creating a super smart index or library for our private information. The second part of process looks a lot like what we saw at the beginning, but with a crucial extra step. A user asks a question, but before the chatbot answers, the user's query also gets turned into embedding. The system then uses this embedding to perform a similarity search in our vector database. It looks for chunks of text from our original documents that are most similar or relevant to the user's question. Those relevant chunks are then retrieved and given to the AI chatbot along with the original question. Now the chatbot has extra context and factual information to create much better, much accurate response. So how does this fix our problems? Well, the knowledge cutoff is gone. We can add the latest documents to our vector database anytime we want. Even information from today and the chatbot can use it immediately. The problem of missing private information is also solved. We can load all of the organization's private documents, processes and data into a vector database, giving the chatbot access to information it never had before. And finally, since we are providing the AI with the actual text from our trusted documents, it's far less likely to make things up or give us false information. Now that we see how it works, let's spotlight the four core elements you will need to build 
a RAC system. So first one is a source document. And this is your trusted information. For the demo in the video, we'll be using the official WFDF rules of Ultimate. If you don't know what Ultimate Frisbee is, I encourage you to check it out. It's really awesome. But let's get back to the rack. Second thing is a vector database. This is the smart library that stores our document embeddings. We'll be using pgvector, which is an extension for our popular PostgreSQL database. Next are two AI models. First one is an embedding model. This is the AI model that turns our text into these numerical embeddings. And the second one is actual AI chatbot. This is the model that generates the final answer for a user. For both the embedding model and the chatbot, I will be using Google's Gemma models, running them locally on my machine with a tool called Olama. I have a whole video about local AI options and how to use them. You can check it out here. All right, now let's dive into the code and see how this is actually works. But before we start, I want to mention, I won't be explaining the API setup, logging, exception handling, or the frontend. Those are important, but they are not the focus of this video. We are here to understand the core rack concept. If you are interested in the full implementation, the entire code is available in my GitHub repository. Link is in the description below. Now, let's focus on two main processes. First, how we load data into our vector database. And second one, how we query the data and get the responses from AA model. So part one, loading data in the vector database. Let's start by looking at how we prepared and load our documents. First, we need to load our source document. In this case, the ultimate Frisbee rules. I am using library called Lama Index with its simple directory reader to load PDF files. This makes it super easy to read documents and convert them into a format we can work with. Once we have loaded the PDF files, we pass all the documents to our Rack service to index them. This is where the magic starts happening. Now, here's the most important part of the whole loading process. Let me walk you through what happens. First, we need to break our document into smaller pieces, those chunks I mentioned before. I am using a sentence splitter with some specific settings. Chunk size is 256. Each chunk will be about 256 tokens and a token is roughly like a word or part of the word. So this is about 150 to 200 words per chunk. Think of it like cutting a big book into smaller manageable paragraphs. Next, chunk overlap is set to 20. This means each chunk shares 20 tokens with the next one. So the end of each chunk and the start of the next chunk have some overlap. It helps maintain context between chunks. So why do we chunk? Because embeddings works best on smaller focused pieces of text rather than entire documents. Next comes the key transformation. This line takes our document chunks and converts each one into an embedding. Remember, that's the numerical representation of the text meaning. Here's what happens behind the scenes. First, each text is sent to our embedding model. In this particular example, it's embedding Gemma running in my Olama service. Second, the model analyzes the text and converts it into a vector, essentially, it's a list of numbers, numerical representation that computers understand. Finally, all those embeddings are stored in our PostgreSQL database using the pgvector extension. This special extension allows PostgreSQL to store and search through vectors efficiently. Think of it like creating a special library index, but instead of alphabetical order, it's organized by meaning. Documents about similar topics end up close together in this mathematical space. So to recap the load process. First, we load the PDF document. Second, we split it into smaller chunks. Third, we cover each chunk into an embedding, this vector of numbers. And four, we store all embeddings in the vector database. And that's it. Our data is now loaded and ready to be searched. Now we can get to the part two. So querying the data and getting the responses. Let's see what happens when a user asks a question. This is the part where RAG really shines. So when user sends a query, several things happen. Let me walk you through the flow. First, we make sure everything is ready. The database is connected, we have documents loaded, and all our models are available. If needed, we create an index from our vector store. This index is like a 
smart search engine for our embeddings. Now, here's where the similarity search happens. Let me explain this carefully. We create a query engine with some important parameters. First parameter is the similarity top K. This tells the system how many similar chunks to retrieve from our database. I am actually retrieving twice as many as the user asked for to get a better coverage. Second parameter is the response mode. I set it as a tree summarize. This tells the AI how to combine information from multiple chunks. And last parameter is the similarity cutoff. This is like setting a minimum relevance score. We only want chunks that are at least 60% similar to the query. When we execute the query, here's what happens step by step. First, the user question is covered into the embedding, just like we did with the document chunks. The same embedding model turns the question into a vector of numbers. Second, Similarity search happens. The system compares the question's vector with all the document vectors in the database. It uses a mathematical calculation to find which chunks are the most similar to the question. Next, the top matching chunks are retrieved. The most relevant pieces of text from our original documents are pulled out of the database. Next, the context is built. Those retrieved chunks are combined together to create context for the AI model. And the last part, the LLM generates a response. Finally, the AI chatbot receives both the original question from the user and the relevant context from our documents and generates an answer based on this specific information. After getting the response, we also extract information about which source documents were used. This includes the file name, page number and the similarity score. This is really useful because user can see exactly where the information came from. The final result contains two key pieces. The AI answer generated using our document context and the source documents. The list of the document chunks that were used complete with the similarity score and metadata. And that's the complete query flow. Now, before we run and check the application, there's one more thing I want to show you that makes this whole system really practical, and that's Docker orchestration. Look at this diagram. We have three separate containers running our application. First is PostgreSQL with pgvector, our vector database for storing embeddings. Secondly, we have FastAPI backend, our Python application that ties everything together. And last one, Olama running our AI models locally. Each of these runs in their own isolated container, but they are all communicate with each other through a virtual network. This magic happens in a single file, the Docker Compose YAML. This file defines our entire infrastructure as a code. With just one command, Docker Compose app, you can spin up the entire application stack no manual installation of PostgreSQL, no complex Python environment setup, no downloading AI models one by one, everything just works. And why is this so powerful? Instead of manually installing PostgreSQL, configuring Python dependencies, setting up Lama and dealing with version conflicts, you can just run one command. The same exact setup works on your laptop, your friend's computer, or a cloud server, anywhere Docker runs. And see those volumes? They ensure your data persists even if you restore the containers. So your database records and AA model weights are safely stored and survive container restarts. And your app data and logs are kept too, so you can always check what happened. Great, now that we know how the underlying mechanism works, we can move on to the platform. As you can see, it's a simple website with a chat option with AI. When we ask AI a question, the entire RAG workflow is run before the model generates the answer. This means that in addition to the text generated by AI, the response also contains the data sources. It is this data that AI based its response on. And we could end this video right here. But usually when I was looking for a video presenting a solution, I was often frustrated by a simple mechanism presented that wasn't suitable for implementation in real-life applications. And the same is true here. Therefore, I would like to conclude by leaving you with a list of elements that need to be improved 
to bring this system to the production conditions. You can use it as a guide for developing this application further, or if you'd like, I can show you how implement specific elements from this list. Just let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, please subscribe and like this video. It really makes a difference for me and I will see you in the next one.